Here are three signs God is saying, stop worrying and trust me more. Number one, if you've done what God has said to do, but now you're worrying about the results, God is saying, stop worrying and trust me more. If you're ignoring God and not doing what he wants, you should worry. Those who rebel against the Lord always reap what they sow. But that type of worry is very different than the worrying about the results of your obedience to God. For example, perhaps you were dating someone that you know was not living for the Lord. In obedience to Jesus, you broke things off. But now you are worrying, did I do the right thing? Was that the one for me? Will God bring that person back into my life? You did the right thing. Trust God. Stop worrying. Now, just keep doing the next right thing. Don't look back with a judgmental eye. Look forward with a hopeful attitude, trusting that God will lead you down better paths because you obeyed him. Proverbs 16.3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Number two, if you're worrying about the needs of tomorrow, but ignoring your service to God today, God is saying, stop worrying and trust me more. Depression usually comes when we are dwelling on the past. Worry, however, usually comes when we are dwelling too much on the future. The only way to truly overcome depression and worry is to serve God in the present. In Matthew 6, 30 through 34, Jesus explains, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Many people read this passage and think, all I need to do is just not worry, and God will take care of it all for me. But that's not what was promised. In verse 33, Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The emphasis here is not just about not worrying, but rather it's about serving God today and not worrying about tomorrow because he will provide. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6, In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Proverbs 20 verse 4, the sluggard does not plow in the autumn. He will seek at harvest and have nothing. Proverbs 12 27, whoever is slothful will not roast his game, but the diligent man will get precious wealth. Yes, God will provide. Everything good is from him, but he does not want you to be negligent about fulfilling your duties. If you're serving Jesus and putting him first, there's no need to worry. Trust him. When you are faithful with the little today, God will take that and produce much for you tomorrow. And number three, if you're worrying about things that are completely outside of your control, God is saying, stop worrying and trust me more. There's an immense amount of peace found through accepting whatever happens. Yes, be wise and diligent with whatever God has put in your hands to manage, but so much of life is totally out of your control. Any one of us could wake up with cancer. At any moment, any one of us could get a terrible phone call telling us one of our loved ones has died. A natural disaster could completely devastate any of the communities we live in. Things like this are out of our control. The only way you will overcome the anxiety and worry that comes from fears about these things is to accept God's will, whatever that may be. You don't have to like it. You don't have to want it and you can certainly pray against it. But if you can't accept the sovereign will of God, who allows both good and bad in this world, then you will always be ruled by fear. As James 4, 13 through 15 explains, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. 
Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Through trusting in the power of God to bring good out of anything, you can overcome worry and find peace in the Lord.